evening, let's take our hymnals to song number 521. Song number 521. The old gospel ship, song number 521. I have good news to bring. I have good news to bring, and that is why I sing all my joys with you I'll share. I'm gonna take a trip in the good old gospel ship and go sailing through the air. Oh, I'm gonna take a trip in the good old gospel ship. I'm going far beyond the sky. Oh, I'm gonna shout and sing. Until the heavens ring When I'm bidding this world goodbye Oh, I can scarcely wait I know I'll not be late For I'll spend my time in prayer And when my ship comes in I'll leave this world of sin And go sailing through the air Oh, I'm gonna take a trip In the good old gospel ship I'm going far beyond the sky. I'm gonna shout and sing until the heavens ring when I'm bidding this world goodbye. Amen. You may be seen, and it's good to have you here. What a great service this morning, and that was so special having the the uh, the baby dedication, and we're so thankful for those little babies. And they were pretty good in church, too. I don't know if you noticed, but they were pretty good. And so, uh, anyway, uh, they behaved a little better than some of our other kids that are older sometimes. But uh, anyway, it was such a blessing there. And thank you so much for uh, helping out the uh, primary uh, uh, Sunday school class with their bake sale. They did very well on that. I think they've got some things tonight as well. So if you missed out this morning... And so we're excited about that. By the way, the sound ministry, we got to help these ministries that uh, only have a couple people in them. And so the sound ministry's got mints and things like that. So uh, anyway, help these, these ministries out as best you can, and that'd be a blessing. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Ask His blessing on the service. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings today that, uh, that we've seen. Uh, Lord, just uh, all around, uh, uh, just uh, thought this afternoon of what, uh, just what a blessing this morning was and in so many different aspects. And uh, God, we thank you that you're with us and that you're so good to us. Pray that you'd bless uh, tonight's service as well. May, it, uh, uh, may you meet with us again and, and may it be special, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's take our hymnals to song number 507. Song number 507. While we think of some testimonies tonight, let's go to song 507. Come thou found. Come the fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the Great a debtor, daily 
tonight. Who has their first testimony? Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Gervitz? I just want to thank the Lord for the healing blessing that I got. You know, live stream is wonderful, but I'll tell you, I sure my, miss my church family. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. I mean, I'd sit at home, and I, you know, I'd see the back of people's heads. <laughs> and I'd think, oh, I'm supposed to be there, you know, mm -hmm. and I couldn't be here. And, but, boy, when you've got a church family, I mean, it becomes your family. Yeah. And I just miss you all. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Who else? Yes, sir, Brother Stephen. That I'm glad my brother's coming down here. And, uh, and our apartment looks nice because they, they just do the, 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 the tie. They put new new tile in. And the, the, everything's all new in there. New right. carpet and all that. looks nice. Amen. And then we got his bedroom done. We just got new furniture. God blessed us with Amen. new furniture and all that. Amen. New end table, new table and all that, and a new microwave. Amen. Praise the Lord. Phyllis, yes, ma'am. Thank you for praying for my daughter-in-law. My daughter-in-law had her leg amputated down to all the way down to her kneecap and all, and she also got saved, and her sister got saved. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord for their salvation. Who else tonight? Yes, ma'am, Miss Nancy. I don't know how to make it, but I thank the Lord for my for Jesus dying on the cross for my sins. Amen. I read the scripture in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John of dying, him dying on the cross. They spit at him and they hit him. And I felt so bad that he died on the cross for me. And it just humbled me so much that I thank the Lord I'm on the winning side. Amen. 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 Who else? Yes, ma'am. Well, I just wanted to add to what my sister said, and we are praising God so much because the family we've been witnessing to um, – her daughter-in-law, Kiana, for many years now. But the timing just wasn't right yet. It wasn't time for her to be born into God's family just yet. But um, anyway, she was sweetly saved. Um, Jason, a good friend of his named Dennis, um, he went to go see her the night of the surgery. Um, and she was just so doped up from the pain medicine that as he was trying to witness to her, she just kept nodding off. And he asked her if he could come back the next day, and she told him yes. And so he went back the next day, and she was more alert, and um, she was ready. Mm -hmm. And she prayed, and she was crying, and he was crying, and, you know, it, just, um, it was just very sweet from what we heard. Amen. But then the next day, um, some of our sweet bro uh, brothers and sisters in the Lord went to go visit her, and um, a lady in the church, her name is Mrs. Faulkner. Um, she just, she's just amazing. And just love is about the only word you could use to describe her. And so she was just encouraging Kiana. And it just so happened that Kiana's sister was there in the room. And from what um, our nephew Jason was telling us, um, her sister Haley started crying. And then um, at one point, I guess Mrs. Faulkner was getting ready to leave, and Haley went over to her and, and wanted to know how she could go to heaven, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So Mrs. Faulkner witnessed to her, shared the gospel with her, and she very sweetly got saved, too. So Amen. two are on their way to heaven Amen. now. Amen. Amen. It's awesome. Who else? This has been great. All right, let's flip over to song number 506. It's just on the other side of the page if you still have your hymnals open. It's 506, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Song number 506. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Ever salvation.
submission, all is at rest. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my soul. That's a testimony tonight. Brother Stephen? Yeah, I've been trying to get the internet and all that. <clears throat> and God, when you know, the guy came out, I, I forgot what day it was, but the guy came out, and and we, for, for Beverly got new internet, I got <laughs> internet. So we got internet in, in both apartments that God's doing good. Amen. Awesome. Who else tonight? Anna? So this morning when we got here, I had Alyssa in the back with me, and I asked her if she was ready to go to nursery, and she's like, no, I want to go to big church with you. And I asked her over and over and over again, like 10 times, you want to go to nursery? She's like, no, I want to go to big church. So she sat with me in Sunday school and sat super well. She colored. She didn't hardly make a sound, and I was just like, I was so excited because she's never asked to sit with me before in big church. And I'm just like, this was such a blessing. And then seeing the babies dedicated this morning also reminded me of when we dedicated her. And just I made my heart all well up with tears again. I was just so excited. And I'm just like, well, I'm just praising the Lord that she's dedicated and that she's in church. And that the message this morning was so good about Amen. teaching your kids to learn about God and to love God and learn about salvation. Um, so it was just a blessing hearing the service, blessing seeing the babies dedicated and just... It was, I had so much fun with her in Sunday school, and she did a really good job. So I'm just really proud of her. That's Amen. basically all I wanted to say. <laughs> Amen. Do you have your hand up, Claudia? Um, I just wanted to say that right uh, before church, I was talking to my oldest sister, which is, um, it, which my brother-in-law is on the prayer list because um, of the tumor that he has. And she was informing me that last Friday they told them that it's shrinking. So I'm like from 52 millimeters to 32, which is a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And um, she was also telling me how she went to church this morning. And my, my family is saved, but they kind of pulled away from church. And I've been trying to get them to come back and get closer to God. And so she was really excited. She said, I'm hoping to go now, you know, get closer and do what I need to Amen. do for God. So Amen. Amen. thank you. Awesome. Who else? All right, let's go to song 445, song number 445. Tell me the old, old story, <clears throat> song number 445. Tell me the old, old story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his glory.
testimonies tonight. Yes, ma'am. Well, the morning, this morning, uh, the message was amazing. Uh, children are important. I joined this church. David was four. Christina was two, I believe. Or he was actually two. I'm sorry. And she was a baby. And I am so glad that we, I stayed with Brent and we ra raising them here because I have friends that do not, and I do not worry about all the things they do. I really, I believe it is because we have the Lord, and he takes a lot from me away, from the, the worries especially, because they are his children, and he knows them from the womb, and we just follow his formula and his plan, and just hope they take on. Amen. It's easier to be a Christian mom. Amen. Than to be in the world and f finding on it. So, yeah, it was a really blessing. It was nice to meet Rory and blessing to see Josiah. And we have two more girls coming, and I'm praying for them. And they all matter, and they are beautiful. And I see a growing church. It's beautiful to see them running around outside. <laughs> outside. I love it, and I am. I love this church. I love. I love the school. I love the nursery. Every single baby Amen. that goes to nursery touches me. I love them. And I am praying for them, uh, for their future, and for them to serve the Lord, ultimately. So, yeah, it was a blessing this morning, and it is true. Let's stay in church with children. It is um, supposed to be this way, and then, it, then it's easier. It's better. Amen. Yes. Yes. So thank Amen. you, Pastor, for the baby dedication this morning. Amen. Yep. And that's when he was the example that we had. Amen. 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 And he was obeyed. Amen. And he was always, you know, he's just, he's just so wonderful to this story. And I Amen. was thinking of this story. I was going to share it about this song. Mm -hmm. And then he came and she got me some little pictures by just talking about this mm. song. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. She never get tired of the story. Amen. Who else? Okay. All right. We'll take out our bulletins. If you need a bulletin, raise your hand. The ushers get one to you. And happy birthday to Melody. She her birthday is today, and so uh, on the in church on her birthday, and so she is such a special, special girl here. We've got ladies' missions group announcement number two. Uh, uh, meeting on Tuesday, February 6th at 6.30. That's back in the Christian Resource Room. And then we have our Valentine's Day activity on Friday, February 9th, and that is at Sakura's here in Woodland. 
and uh, that is at 6.30. Please sign up so we know how many uh, uh, folks. Normally, we'll fill up uh, a couple of hibachi tables there, and so uh, uh, let us know so we can reserve the right, uh, right amount there. All right. All right. Plenty of hibachi, no sake. All right. So, all right. Uh, Senior Saint lunch on uh, Tuesday, February 13th, and so uh, looking forward to getting together with the seniors there. And that'd be a blessing. And then a teen activity on February 17th. Brother Isaac, do we know what that is yet? Yes, what is it? All right, game day here at the church. I like those cheap activities, amen. And so uh, that teen activity there. And then ladies' conference in Napa, we still have room uh, if you're able to go. Uh, that is February 22nd through the 24th. Let's go ahead and stand together. We'll sing our song of the month. Sing it out on the first. If you're in the battle for the Lord and right, keep on the firing line. If you win, my brother, surely you must fight. Keep on the firing line. There are many dangers that we all must face. If we die fighting, it is no disgrace. Coward in the service, he will find no place. So keep on the firing line. You must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run, nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep on the firing line. God will only use a soldier he can trust. Keep on the firing line. If you wear a crown, then bear the cross you must. Keep on the firing line. Life is but to labor for the master dear. Help to banish evil and to spread good cheer. Great you'll be rewarded for your service here. So keep on the firing line. You must fight. Be brave against all evil, never run nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep on the fire. When we get to heaven, when we get to heaven, brother, we'll be glad. Keep on the fire line. I will praise the Savior for the call we have. Keep on the firing line. When we see the souls that we have had to win, leading them to Jesus from the paths of sin, with a shout of welcome we will all march in. So keep on the firing line. You must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run, nor even lag behind. If you Keep on the firing line. Amen. You may be seated while verses come. Brother Danny, why don't you come and lead us in prayer? We thank the Lord for Brother Danny. He is our kids' preacher and also uh, just our main guy in our Spanish ministry, and we're so thankful for him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for today. I thank you for the many blessings uh, here at this church. and. Uh, thank you for always uh, being there when we uh, call upon you, God. I just pray that you be with this sermon tonight and bless this offering. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Amen. Let's go to song number 382. Song number 382. Song number 382. One more uh, song tonight. We're going to start, turn to song number 331. Song number 331. Surely goodness and mercy. Song number 331. dark lonesome valley when I walk through the dark lonesome valley my Savior will walk with me there and safely his great hand will lead me to the mansions he's gone to prepare should they go Oh, the 
together for the reading of the scriptures. Psalm 107, verse number 1, the Bible says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. By the way, that's why we have testimony time. Uh, I think it's important that people give testimonies. You say, I'm not a public speaker uh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I think it's important. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Look at verse number 8. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Look at verse 15. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Look at verse 21. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Look at verse 31. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. One preacher once said that God doesn't stutter. When he says something and repeats it, it means something. And tonight, it was such a wonderful service today, I thought about how good God is. And I wanted to preach a real short sermon on the goodness of the Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your goodness. And Lord, tonight, if... Uh, you could use me to maybe inspire your folks to praise the Lord for your, for your goodness to us. Lord, I pray that we wouldn't pass on the fact that you are so good to us. You've been so good to us. As we've heard the testimony tonight, we've heard even a few tears tonight of how good you've been in saving us and how good you've been in our lives. Lord, I pray that we would just take a few moments tonight, as that song said, surely goodness and mercy follows us. And Lord, I pray that we would think about your goodness tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Take 
take my life Make it what you'd have it be I'm your child and you're my father I'm the clay and you're the potter Lord, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me song for the sermon tonight. The goodness of the Lord. If you will, turn to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. Could I say there are several different ways that God shows his goodness to us? And tonight I'm just going to kind of give you those ways and uh, chat a little bit about it and uh, we'll be on our way. But notice uh, in Romans chapter 11 verse Number 22, the Bible says, Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell. Severity, but uh, toward thee, goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Could I say that, first of all, God showed his goodness in the fact that he saved us? We don't have time to go through all of Romans chapter 11, but uh, Paul is talking to the Gentiles, and uh, the Gentiles uh, kind of basically said, well, the Jews got cast off, and hey, uh, now we got salvation, and God's using us, and Paul said, hey, be careful, realize that God could have just uh, just worked through his chosen people. By the way, uh, unless you're a Jew here tonight, which I don't know of anybody who is, all right, maybe you've got a little bit of Jewish blood in you, uh, we're all Gentiles. Thank God that salvation came to the Gentiles too. Thank God that salvation came to us. You ever thought about that? Sometimes we take our salvation for granted. Sometimes we, uh, uh, you know, just uh, think, well, uh, you know, of course we got saved. You know, it's not that easy for some people. You think about uh, what went into you getting saved. Turn back a couple of pages to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, I look at verse number 29 and 30, some oftentimes misunderstood verses in the Bible. Uh, but uh, verse 29 says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might uh, be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he uh, called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Uh, some people will try to make that say that God makes you get saved. Uh, that's not what those verses mean. That's not what predestination is. Uh, but what it, uh, what it is is, you know, God does know who is going to accept him. God does understand that. God knows everything. He does know. Just because he knows doesn't mean that uh, he makes you get saved. Uh, but could I say that uh, God does a lot of work behind the scenes to help you get saved? You know, there's nothing wrong with saying that, uh, you know, God does most of the work in our salvation, that God does all the work in our salvation. The only thing you do is choose, and uh, God gives you that choice. But you think about it. Uh, you know, I was telling the uh, young people in school a little, well, little while back, uh, you know, I, uh, I was raised in a Christian home. Uh, I went to church. Uh, I've gone to church all my life. I went to Christian school all my life. And uh, the truth is, I got saved when I was four or five years old. I don't remember that far back uh, very well. I don't know the date. Uh, but I was about four or five, got reassurance a little bit later. You know, uh, the truth is, is uh, salvation really kind of came pretty easy for me. But, you know, oftentimes I've sat there and thought, I wonder what it would have been like if I hadn't been born in a Christian home. What if I had been born into a Satanist home? Understand that Satanists have kids too. Understand that maybe drunkards have kids too. Druggies have kids too. Uh, sometimes I, I kind of think, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you might get a little puffed up. You know, well, you know, I mean... Uh, uh, I go to church all the time. I've been raised in church, you know, and I know the Bible and all that stuff. Uh, you know, maybe God, God realized that I would not have gotten saved if I hadn't had all that help. You ever thought about that? Uh, you kids that were uh, raised in Christian home, uh, maybe, you're, maybe you're the weak ones, or maybe we're the weak ones. 
And uh, those that got saved out of rough backgrounds, maybe they're the strong ones. They had a lot more to overcome. Do you realize what God did? You think about your different salvation testimony. Uh, how did it happen? Who told you? How was it that uh, you happened to come uh, in contact with somebody with the gospel? You know, there's a lot of people in this world that have never heard the gospel. I, I forget, but the, statistically, uh, I mean, there's some, some countries where 98% of the people never even hear about Jesus Christ. What if you had been born in Iran? Well, you know, we, we think, praise the Lord, we were born in America, freedom. Uh, boy, there's a lot more to that freedom than, uh, than, than you think about. Uh, there is no reason why you're any better than a person in Iran. It's just that God chose to let you be born in America. And God chose to let somebody else be born in Iran. But the truth is, is you're no better and I'm no better than anybody in Iran. Uh, a people in Iran, about 98% of the people never hear about Jesus. Why? Because that's very illegal. Uh, and we send missionaries over and they die quite often in Iran, uh, just trying to get the gospel as much as they can. They get the gospel out as much as they can until they get killed, and then hopefully somebody goes and replaces them. Uh, but, but you think about that. You got saved, probably had a lot to do with being in America. For many of you, you got saved because you had Christian parents or life that cared about you. Uh, for some of you that uh, maybe came from a rougher background, maybe you had a bus captain or you had uh, uh, somebody in church that knocked on your door and uh, saw you saved. Maybe for some of you, uh, uh, God uh, maybe brought you out of a rough thing and you were looking for something and you came to a church and found somebody who uh, cared enough to give you the gospel. By the way, do you know many churches that you walk in won't give you the gospel? They'll say, hey, come party with us. Hey, come fellowship with us. Hey, we're all one big happy family. Uh, and, and uh, you know, oftentimes we may meet those four, uh, folks door knocking. Oh, yeah, you know, uh, I've had this before. Uh, I'm a deacon at this church. Do you know you're going to heaven? No. How'd you become a deacon? guess you're there long enough. I don't know. Think about that. Out of all the places you could have walked into, you walked into maybe a church like this. Now, there's a lot of churches out there. Think about the statistical possibility of all the possible places you could have walked in, and yet you walked into a place that, uh, that gave the gospel. The truth is, is uh, it, it wasn't an accident. God did a lot of work to make sure you got there. For some of you, you made it a little bit hard, too. You were a little stubborn. And uh, you know what? Uh, thank God that he didn't give up on you. God's goodness. God's goodness. Turn to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Another area. Of God's goodness. Uh, look at verse number four. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? Could I say that uh, God's goodness sometimes leads a person to repentance? How many of you maybe uh, have backslidden before? Like sometimes maybe really backslid? And God was still good to you? You think about in that uh, backslidden state, what could have happened to you? How, how, how bad it could have gotten had you not gotten out? Uh, what, what, what kind of possibilities you could have really done to wreck your life? You say, well, uh, Pastor, you know, uh, I did kind of wreck some of the areas of my life. Uh, trust me, it could have been worse. You think about God's goodness. Think about somebody like the prodigal son who ran away and, uh, you know, spent all his stuff and right his living and, and ate with the, uh, the pigs. And you say, boy, that's bad. It could have been worse. He could have gotten to a state where he couldn't go back. Uh, he could have gotten to a state where uh, maybe he was too sick to go back or uh, not physically able to go back. Uh, God uh, uh, protected him enough to 
get him back. Think about for, uh, uh, for some that uh, maybe fall away. Maybe you didn't fall away from church, but in your heart you fell away. Praise the Lord you didn't fall all the way out. It could have been worse. Maybe in some cases uh, you started to, to, to go down a path of sin. And then God did something special in your life. And maybe uh, you, you thought, I can't believe that God would do something like that for me. And this is the way I've been living. You ever been there before? This is the way I'm living? I can't believe that God still blessed me. I don't deserve this blessing. I don't deserve it to be that good. And oftentimes it leads to repentance. Uh, turn, if you will, to Hosea chapter 11. Hosea chapter 11. That is part of those 12 books that are really hard to find in the back of the Old Testament there. It's the very first one. Find Daniel and then just go to Hosea. <clears throat> Hosea chapter 11. Notice what God does. Hosea chapter 11. Hosea chapter 11. Look at verse number 4. Hosea chapter 11, verse number 4. He said, I drew them with cords of a man, with bands of love. And I was to them as they that take off the yoke on their jaws. And I laid meat unto them. How does it describe God? Pulling on you. Cords of love just pulling you in. You get away from him and uh, you know what God does? He takes those, uh, that lasso of love and starts grabbing you and just starts pulling on it. Uh, what does he do? He takes that uh, heavy yoke of sin off of you and uh, that weight of uh, guilt off of you. And what does he do? Uh, he lays meat out there for, for you to eat. God's been good. Uh, over the years, we've had folks that uh, fall out and come back. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we always accept them back, by the way, uh, in loving arms. Uh, but but uh, they say, boy, I'm glad I'm back. And, by the way, I think uh, it, could been, it could have been worse. Think about that. Uh, the truth is, is uh, we come to God because of his love. We won't go there because we know the verse. First John chapter 4, verse 19 says, we love him. Because he first loved us. You know, the, even the reason that you come to God is because he loves you first. Uh, you find yourself drifting. Uh, could I say that if you feel that tug pulling, it's God pulling on you. Yeah. It's God pulling on you. He doesn't hate you. He, 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 he's uh, uh, he's long-suffering. He loves you. It's his goodness that leads to repentance. Uh, could I say that we are forgiven because of his love. Turn to Psalm chapter 25. I think that's what it is. I can't read my writing here, so I wrote it really small. And if it's not, I will just tell you there's a great verse, verse number seven, somewhere in Psalms, but I don't know which one. It is this one. Psalm 25, verse seven. Remember not the sins of my youth, well, I'm certainly glad he doesn't do that, huh? <laughs> some of you older ones, uh, boy, I did some stupid stuff when I was young. Young people, don't do stupid stuff, please, all right? Uh, you'll regret it when you're older. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. You think about the fact that uh, we get forgiven. Well, I don't know about you, but uh, that, that thing of forgiveness kind of gets me a little bit. Sometimes I look and I say, I don't even know why God would forgive me. You ever felt like this? Uh, I don't know why God just doesn't get rid of me, throw me in hell where I deserve. You say, well, you're saved. You, uh, you're not going to go to hell. You know what? Even if he decided to revoke my salvation, throw me in hell, I would deserve it. He, was, he ain't going to do that because he doesn't change, thankfully. But I deserve it. By the way, I know a bunch of other people that deserve it, too. Don't look at me with those hypocritical eyes, all right? Uh, uh, it's true. It's true. The fact that he forgives us is his goodness. You know why he forgives us? His goodness sake. His goodness sakes. Number three, the goodness of God and his blessings. Turn to Psalm 65. Psalm 65. Yeah. 
be safe. Pastor's on point three. We're moving along great. I'm not telling you how many points I have, but it'll be short. Psalm 65. Psalm 65. Verse number 10. Think about God's goodness uh, to us. Uh, Thou waterest the ridges thereof abundantly. Thou settlest the furrows thereof. Thou makest it uh, soft with showers. Thou blessest the springing thereof. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness. And thy paths drop fatness. Boy, we talked about last year. Boy, God crowned last year with a bunch of goodness, didn't he? Last year's blessings is what spawned this year's thing. This is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. God crowned last year. I don't know about how your last year went, but I know for for me, God did a lot of good things. And truthfully, if you look at your life, uh, even if uh, you said, boy, there were some things that were rough in my year, God did a lot of good things for you this year, this last year. He certainly did. Uh, God uh, blesses. Uh, He gives great blessings. Uh, turn, uh, look at uh, verse number four. Uh, Blessed is the man <clears throat> whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. We heard testimonies uh, tonight. And by the way, it seems like every Sunday night we hear uh, some kind of testimony about this. I'm so thankful for God's people. I'm so thankful for the church that God has given me. I'm so thankful for people that actually care about me. How about you? But outside the world, really outside of this building, uh, and besides Christian friends that I have, there's not a lot of people that really care about me. I have some coworkers. Besides Brother Aubin, I think uh, maybe that'd be the only one that'd care about me. If I died tomorrow, they, they might say something nice at the, at the warehouse. Uh, they're not going to take care of my family for me. They're not going to make sure that everything's taken care of. God's goodness in his house. God gives us a lot of good things. Look at uh, Psalm 33. Psalm 33. Trying to keep all these close together. Psalm 33. Tonight, you're not going to hear anything new, but uh, hopefully it'll spawn you to think about some of these things. Psalm 33, uh, look at verse... uh, He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. You know, really all around you look is goodness. You think about uh, the things that we have in this country. God's pretty good to us. We live in the wealthiest country in the world. Uh, You you say, well, I'm not very wealthy. I'm kind of poor. Uh, You're you're richer than most people in the world. You know, one one day I remember I was thinking, I I don't know if the kids were studying medieval England or not. I don't know what it was. But uh, I thought about this. I thought, you know, I live better than the king of England did back in the Middle Ages. Oh, you know, you you see that big feast or whatever. Think about how drafty you'd be in an old castle. No heating and air. The old king had, you know, uh, had had the the outhouse kind of thing, just like uh, the old timers did. Thank God for indoor plumbing, huh? Thank God for uh, those things. By the way, I've been to a few countries that don't have that indoor plumbing either. Thank God for those things. Thank God for all the different goodness that he gives us in the world. God's blessing. Turn to Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Boy, God's goodness leads us to repentance. But could I say that God's goodness also gives us a little faith? Look at Psalm 27. Look at verse 13. Psalm 27, verse 13. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord... In the land of the living, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Have you ever experienced God's goodness so much and then uh, something really uh, bad happens or something uh, kind of shattering happens and uh, you say this, I know it's going to be okay because God's always been good to me. 
I think about some of the folks uh, in our church that have gone through cancer. And what, what great testimonies. I know it's going to be okay. God's always good. I like what uh, one preacher, he, he preaches a sermon, you know, God is good all the time, all the time, God is good. Uh, that's a great statement. Uh, you know, God is always good. Uh, he, it establishes our faith. Uh, you can know that uh, tomorrow is going to be okay because God has always been good every other day. Why wouldn't he be good tomorrow? Uh, by the way, even if tomorrow's uh, rotten, uh, uh, you're still breathing, your heart's still pumping, and you still got up out of bed. Maybe you didn't wish you got out of bed, but uh, you could get out of bed. God's still good. He's still good. It gives us faith for the next day. Turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 6. 2 Chronicles chapter 6. 2 Chronicles chapter 6. We're on point five, not much left to go. Second Chronicles chapter six. I'm not going to lie to you today. I told you it was going to be a short sermon, all right? I'm not going to lie today. I lied last week, but not today, all right? Second Chronicles chapter six, verse 41. Good thing I'm not preaching online, amen. Now, therefore, arise, O Lord God, uh, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests, O Lord God, uh, be clothed with salvation, and let thy saints rejoice in thy goodness. Could I say that it is our duty to rejoice in the goodness that God does? That's why testimony time is so important. That's why we have it every Sunday night. Uh, we ought to rejoice. In fact, uh, I looked at the word goodness uh, in uh, the Bible. It's found 48 times in the Bible. And you know, uh, most of the times that that word goodness was found, especially in the early part of the Bible, it was uh, King David having a feast. Why? Rejoicing over the goodness that God had done to Israel. Uh, King Josiah having a feast. Why? Rejoicing over the goodness that God had done to Israel. Uh, th this group uh, uh, in Israel having a feast, uh, rejoicing over the goodness that God did. Uh, you know, God's people are supposed to rejoice over God's goodness. Uh, you know, we don't, uh, we get a little sour in our attitudes because we don't pay attention to God's goodness. Uh, we, we make small the good things that God does for us, and then uh, uh, when we get a hangnail, it's a big deal. I can't believe God gave me a hangnail, you know, I really... Uh, boy, this is a trial and tribulation that I have to go through. I know we have a little bit bigger problems than that, but uh, could I say that if you focus more on God's goodness, the, 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 the trials and stuff wouldn't be so bad. They wouldn't be so bad. We ought to rejoice over God's goodness. Lastly, can I say that uh, God's goodness should be a part of the saint's life. Turn to Psalm chapter 23. Psalm chapter 23. Psalm chapter 23. You know the verse. In fact, we sang it. Verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Could I say that uh, uh, God's goodness is uh, it, it, it's part of a saint's life. God's goodness follows you. Uh, you do right with God and you, uh, uh, you stay in the house of the Lord and God's goodness will follow you. I'm not saying that uh, bad things won't ever happen, but could I say that God's goodness is always better than uh, anything that happens? God's always good. Turn to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Because God is so good to us, because he blesses us so much, goodness ought to be a part of our life. Look at Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. You know, we ought to be good to people because God has been good to us. We ought to express God's goodness. Turn to Ephesians chapter 5, just a couple pages over. Ephesians chapter 5, we see one of the fruits of the Spirit is goodness. 
But it's a pretty important fruit of the Spirit because look at what Ephesians chapter 5, verse 9 says. For the fruit of the Spirit, that list that we just read, is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. You know, a lot of the fruit of the Spirit is all tied up in just being good. You know, you can rejoice uh, if you're good to people. You can be at peace if you're good to people. Uh, you can have faith if you're good to people. God's goodness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for tonight. Lord, some short thoughts. But God, I just I sat there thinking about how good you were today and all the different services, how good you've been to us the last year and truly the last several years. And really, when we look on our lives, you've always been good to us. We just don't recognize it sometimes. But Lord, I pray that tonight maybe we would just spend a little time thanking you for how good you've been. Lord, I pray that we wouldn't be generic and just say, thank you, God, for being good to me. But maybe we would uh, take a little time and thank God for exactly what he's been good to you. I, I pray that we would uh, consider what you've done in our lives and be thankful for it. Let's stand to our feet as the piano begins to play. Tonight, why don't you thank God for his goodness? What a great song there. If you're not praying, maybe we can sing it together. You know the words. He's so good to me. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He's so good to me. He died for me. He died for me. He died for me. He's so good to me. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your goodness to us. Lord, I pray that we'd never forget that. I pray that uh, we, as your redeemed, would, would tell you, we tell others about your goodness. Lord, I pray that we'd think about these different areas tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you. We have our teachers meeting in the back. You are dismissed.